Welcome back, everyone, to this special edition of Hannity, the 2020 election. Some Democrats are running for president, uh, have already uh, a major requirement for their pick for vice president. It has to be a woman. Take a look. Uh, the question you didn't hear it is why well, I pledge to have a woman running mate. I will have a woman running mate. To me, it's really clear that we do that. I've pledged that I would ask a woman to serve as vice president. I would put forward a diverse candidate and I'd put forward policies uh, that would make sure that, you know, inherent bias that exists or discrimination that exists in communities uh, would be uh, eliminated. All right. Joining us now with reaction is Fox News contributor Emily Campagno, Trump 2020 campaign national press secretary Kaylee McEnany and relatable podcast host Ali Beth Stuckey. Ladies, welcome aboard. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Uh, you know, what's interesting to me in all Thank of you. this conversation is the presumption that a woman either wouldn't naturally fit into that position and that you don't need to pledge uh, or the fact that any of these uh, gentlemen would have to be the ones being asked if they'd be want to be the vice president by a woman. Um, let me let me ask you, um, uh, Ali Beth, it, it's it's an interesting framework. And, perhaps, you know, I want a, a woman to be in power. I want a woman to be president and vice president and whatever position she wants. But I want it to be the right women. Uh, is, do you find it a little uh, sexist? Uh, that these are the guys are saying that they're going to, I don't know, pick a woman to help be their secretary? What do, you, what do you think of this whole conversation? Well, I think so. I think, first of all, if they were real feminists, then they would just step down and they would say, you know what? I uh. want a woman, a woman to uh, <laughs> win the nomination by default. And so I'm already hmm. questioning their feminist credentials. But yes, I agree with you. It's incredibly patronizing. It's incredibly disheartening to know that if you're a woman on the left, apparently you're not going to be looked at for competency and qualifications. Right. You're only going to be looked at because of your gender. I think that's a huge disservice to the very qualified women who are on the left who may do a really good job of being yeah. vice president. Unfortunately, they're never going to know whether or not it's because they were qualified for the job. You know, Kaylee, I mean, this is one of the issues with the identity politics, right, is this idea that it's not about what you've done or what you can accomplish or the fact that you've been a great competitor. It's that someone's going to tap you because you fit a category. Uh, it, does that need to remain to be the case? Because women, once given the opportunity, we deliver. Uh, do, you agree, do you agree that this is what the Democrats should be doing? And is, is is it possible at all that they can fit into this framework? No, this is not what the Democrats should be doing. This is identity politics, exactly as you said. And this is what the left does. Everyone has to neatly fit into a bucket, a certain racial category or gender category. They balkanize society into different segments and hope we all fight against one another as they rise to the top. What they are doing here is saying, I want a woman vice president because guess what? We females are props to the Democratic Party. They don't care about women's rights. If they did, they wouldn't be advocating for infanticide and killing women and men outside of the womb. So this is ridiculous. It's identity politics, but not surprised. That's the Democratic Party of today. Yeah, when we look at, at uh, the issues and how uh, the Democrats, uh, you know, just look at the eight years of Obama, a lot of promises, a lot of uh, demonstrations of what what they've thought was important. But when it came to delivering, women's lives uh, did not improve. Unemployment, of course, extraordinary levels. Wages did not go up. Fewer choices for us under President Trump, uh, who uh, the Democrats constantly complain about his policies have changed our lives and the lives of every American for the better. Uh, do you think that's what can be focused on? It is the 21st century. Or is there a space where you've got to specify certain gender or race or uh, at least uh, mentions or certain kinds of identity groups? Is there any value to that at all? Uh, I think the value lies in specificity, but in a, in a neutral sense in terms of that identity. So what I yeah. mean by that is policies that are specific so that sure. every human and every man and woman here understands how they are affected at the kitchen table, right? So economically, how their bank accounts are affected, how their rights and freedoms are affected, and how it affects the actual genders. That's more of a trickle down and a, and a subsequent um, uh, result. And I think that the issue with that is that's why it's, it's a token rather than a decision. It's rather than an action. And especially in terms of going into it, these candidates that are saying, oh, I'm definitely going to have this certain diverse requirement and that box checked. Well, those of us who are in those boxes feel we'd rather have it be an, an action rather than that commitment yeah. to the decision. A excellent paper. point. And Ali Beth, I mean, this comes down when we're when we're just checking boxes as Emily noted, then it's almost as though the, there's then no expectation for more, that there is no expectation for us to be able to deliver, that we're like a picture on the wall, that this meets a certain requirement. Uh, is, is that the follow through that happens when, when it comes to then the jobs we're, we're given and the authority that we also receive in the process of this? 
Well, it's the line that we use a lot when we're talking about the Democrats nowadays. It's the soft bigotry of low expectations. I personally must just have a higher view of women than they do on the left than these people who think that we are just a quota to be filled. I would love to be hired for something. I would love to be chosen for something. But I want to be chosen because I know that I'm the best, that I was the best candidate for that position, that I was qualified, that I was seen as competent. I think there are plenty of competent, qualified women that can fill positions of power. And I think that we are better than just a picture on the wall is, uh, as you said. Now, at Kaylee, at the same time, uh, we've got uh, women who are running uh, for president on the Democratic side, uh, and eventually there will be a woman president. I want it to be the right person and a person who will be good for the country, which means it will be a Republican. Uh, at the same time, uh, you've got women who, a woman inevitably could become, of course, the nominee. What, what are all these men, do you think, are going to do when they're the ones in the position to be chosen by the woman? Uh, do, are they already removing themselves? from being the vice president because they were going to deign to pick the woman for that position themselves? Sure. By their logic, all of these men in the Democratic 2020 field should move aside. There should be a double female ticket because that's what identity politics in the Democratic Party demands. It's the diametric opposite of what President Trump has done. Standing behind this camera, I'm at the rally venue, are a few dozen patriots. And why are people getting here 24 hours before the rally? Because President Trump looks at Americans like Americans. And what has the result been for women specifically? Yeah. Generational lows in unemployment, paid family leave in his budget. Uh, the child t tax credit doubling, right. the policies of this president are working for everyone. You know, and that's it, is that po the right policies help everyone across the board, and interestingly enough, including women as well. All right, ladies, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate